Mm. I mean, I've seen guys from nine years ago, seven years ago, a couple of months ago who did this, but it was just like for them to put out a video. I don't think it was a thing where they included other drummers from YouTube. And that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to bring the, the drumming community together and just have fun. This is the, <clears throat> this is the main thing about this thing. It's just to have fun. Not to tell anybody, hey, look, you can't, you don't know your kid, or you're playing like an ass, or whatever. It's, it's to have fun. It's just to have fun. I mean, let's admit, this world is such a crazy place at the moment. There's so much bad stuff and negative stuff happening. So why not just have a little bit of fun? Hey everyone, welcome back to the All Music Matters in That podcast. I'm your host, Brian, and joining me today, all the way out in South Africa, Mike Few. How you doing, brother? I'm you, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How about it? What's the weather like out there now? Because actually, it's almost midnight out in your way, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually very late in the evening for me, but that's quite normal for me because I usually stay in the studio up until 3 a.m. in the mornings anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, mommy, it's past my bedtime. All right. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, I wanted to reach out because in this podcast, I wanted to get to know like other musicians, kind of like where I'm at. We don't really have like a big standing or anything like that. We're kind of just working our way to maybe gain some recognition, maybe a nice bigger audience. And yeah, of course. Of course. the thing is too, like we're all really human beings human beings sorry getting a little tongue tied there we are all human beings and i just really wanted to get to kind of know people too and actually get back into interacting too because especially with what covid has been doing so oh yeah no yeah definitely no i, I think what you're doing is actually very really cool i mean i've seen a lot of the interviews you have done so far and i think it's it's really cool you know it's it's like i always say in my videos and uh, the message that i'm trying to put out is you know we're speaking the the language of the universe as musicians so it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of cool to, you um, uh, know, friend, we're just having a conversation the other day about how cool it is with technology nowadays. I mean, I can be here in South Africa, you could be over there in the States, and we can talk, and I can go and talk to a friend of mine in Mexico or whatever. It's, it's, it's so cool that we can actually reach out to each other. It's, it's cool. What you're doing is great, uh, Brian. It's Absolutely, cool. too. And it's free. It's actually free. And yeah, even better, way. even better. It's free. There we go. Mm. All right. So what I like to do in these kind of interviews, I like to ask my interviewees some questions. And as we near the end, I give them a little bit of freedom. And so just questions right here and everything. You ready? Go for it, man. All right. So let's start off with a simple one too. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get into drumming? That's actually a very funny thing because I've always, I've always been around music ever since I was a kid. Uh, my main instrument that I started playing at the ripe old age of 13, started playing guitar. Uh, didn't really know anything, never took any lessons or anything. And then uh, one day I came to visit my dad. This was way back in 1994. I was 14 years old back then. And there was this very cheap <laughs> drum kit. You know, nothing nothing special. I mean, and I thought, well, this, this looks interesting. And... Uh, it was kind of like it just happened, you know. Just okay, this this is this isn't hard, you know. Just started messing around with some beats. Of course, the kit wasn't tuned and anything. The skin sounded terrible. The symbol was terrible. Everything was just bad, you know. And I didn't know anything about sticks and anything. And then I just kind of kept doing it for going on, going on, and going on. And eventually, I. Uh, I, I started doing music professionally at the age of 18. Started working in various studios and stuff, uh, you know, basic recording artists, South African artists mainly, and um, always filled in as a session musician on drums and guitar. And then afterwards I thought, oh, well, might as well expand the, the repertoire and start playing some bass and playing some piano. And so it just went on from there and there and, there, and that's what I'm still doing to this day. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wish I took lessons because I think a lot of things would 
it's kind of ironic that I'm saying that because the way that I play drums now, I've, I've, I've never met a disabled drummer teacher. So I guess you, uh, you have to kind of jump in and swim. Mm. <laughs> and that's basically what I did. So, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the short of the long, if I can put it that way. Yeah. I guess, uh, what sort of disability are you going through? I'm a T3 paraplegic. Mm. Uh, I became uh, paralyzed uh, in 2003. So yeah, we're going on for 19 years now this year. Uh, it's actually, um, it's very weird. Um, I would love to say, I know it's going to sound very weird to your audience. I wish I was in a car accident. I wish I, uh, I did something to cause this. But in fact, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I just woke up one morning and I couldn't walk. It's uh, as simple as that. Medically speaking, it's uh, I had a I had a stroke basically in my spinal cord, and uh, that uh, destroyed my nervous system from up here downwards. So luckily, I still have my arms. I almost didn't. I was very close to being a quadriplegic, uh, quadriplegic. but um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, this happened. It's a it's a very rare thing that happened. It's a Back then, they said it could be like you know one in a million. Yes. So, but yeah, it's that day the universe he looked at me and he said, "Oh, there you are." Luck of the draw. Oh. In a manner of speaking, yeah, that boy, that would really suck. Too yeah, no, it's... no, my friend. I mean, it's it's one of those things. But uh, it's uh, you can either do one or two things. You can either lie down and die or you can keep on fighting with what you have left that's how i see it well, absolutely yeah it's normally that, one or the that, other that's pretty much the thing in life in general too uh, yeah, in any situation any situation hmm. absolutely yeah my uh, name is your coffee Chet. nope nope go ahead you got the coffee and you got the cigarette and everything he is living large oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's what i do man. uh Get back into drumming. Uh, when did you start doing YouTube? Was this something you've been going on for a while, or is this something you started recently? The music thing, the music channel, I only started a year ago. Uh, that was actually February. It was my year anniversary, February or March. But I have been doing YouTube on my other two channels. I have a gaming channel as well, as you know. Uh, I was only gaming. I started that one three years ago. Uh, various guides on uh, PlayStation 4 games, mainly RPG games like Bloodborne, Dark Souls. Uh, I am attempting Elden Ring at the moment, but they, uh, the bosses are kicking my... Uh, yeah, they're kicking me. They're, <laughs> it's, it's, be, it's hard at the moment. But I, I, I don't give up. I just keep on you know, doing what I do. <laughs> and then the other channel that I have is called The Nightmare Cinema Club, where I, I'm a, what you call a horror fanatic. I love my horror movies, like you can, well, you can see that covered there in the back. It's all the, all my original copies, hard copies of uh, horror movies. And uh, so I, on that channel, I do a lot of look backs on my favorite movies and, you know, just share information about the filmmakers and the movie and uh, whatever, you know. So yeah, three channels on YouTube keeps me kind of busy. That's why I'm in there so much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's hard work. Studio is always open, twenty four seven. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Well, almost twenty four seven. You gotta sleep. I sleep about an hour or two a day. So, catnaps. He does the catnaps. Yeah, there's, there's. I mean, you know, this drummer as well, uh, Mike Conway, very, very good friend of mine. He's also a YouTube drummer. He always uh, snaps at me for not sleeping enough. Actually, a very funny thing happened the other day. I was doing a cover uh, of a Swedish rock band called Godhart <laughs> and I actually fell asleep while I was playing Legitly. Uh, if it, no no genuine I was, I was I was playing and I, and I just felt my head go and I felt my head go and all of a sudden I, I'm looking at the edit and I'm sitting there I'm playing but I'm fast <laughs> okay but now you need to go sleep now no, it's time you really have to start I'll upload that video soon so yeah you can see what I, yeah Bloopers. It'd be one of your bloopers. How about that? Yeah, well, I don't mind a blooper. It's fine with me. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Like you said, we're all, we're all humans. We, we make mistakes, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've recognized that too, but unfortunately, I got a little perfectionist side of me at times. So I feel like I have to go back. I missed that one note. I missed that one note. I got to just do that one part again. And now I'm kind of like, I think I just need to let it go and just kind of play it how I can and try to get as close as I can. I I don't play, I I can't read sheet music. So if I do a guitar thing, okay, obviously if I'm working for someone where I have to do some session work and something is, then you have to play it more properly to what they've written. Uh, (laughs) But when it comes to my drumming stuff, I just feel what the music is doing. I mean, if it's a heavy song, then I'm just going to beat the hell out of the kit. Uh, and just add as much dynamics as I can. If it's a very slow thing and a very soft thing, yeah, then you're going to have a groove a bit, you know. <laughs> but feel what the music is doing. That's what I do too, yeah. And I put mine through MIDI. That's what I kind of do. I try to get as close as I can, and sometimes I go back and maybe adapt to kind of match okay. what the song is. So that's what I'm, I'm very old. I'm very old school in the way that I record. Very, very old school. It's. I've seen a lot of guys have all these fancy gadgets and it's MIDI this and samples this. I'm just straightforward, man. If I, if I want a guitar turn, I plug it into my Marshall and I just tweak it until I find the sound. <laughs> no, no plugins and that stuff. No, no, no. I'm an old man, man. I don't do stuff like that. I, I keep it old. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, sometimes old school is better. That's what you can definitely tell them like hey my way is still you, you know the saying as well you know the saying, the saying as well as me man if it, uh, if it ain't broken then fix it you know <laughs> so, it's one of those things yep absolutely uh jump me back to your channels i guess i'll start first with the video game because i had brought it up a couple times in my other interviews because yeah i've seen that yeah thank I, you for that by the way no worries another shot too bloodborne that was the game i was actually very big on it too but uh I stopped playing after I had beaten the game. I didn't beat it entirely, but I at least got like all the achievements and everything. I didn't do okay. all the chalice. I didn't do all the chalice dungeons. Jun- the chalice dungeons. Okay, that's yeah. They could be they could be quite tedious. Those ones. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I'm, I'm not too. I don't want to brag about this, but currently I have about two thousand eight hundred hours in the game. <laughs> I've done two hundred and. 46 full playthroughs. Mm. So you got so the that's how much I love that's how much I love Bloodborne. <laughs> that's how you got, much you I got love the stats game. all the way up to 99 on every single thing. Well, on my one character, I have I have two different PlayStations. There's one in my studio and I have one in my in my in my bedroom. So the one in my bedroom has my 10 main characters and this one has 10 as well. So I have 20 different characters, 20 different bolts. And two of those characters are at the maximum level uh, of five or four, which is kind of fun if you start playing that way. Then you're too, you're overpowered, so you can you know kick anything's ass. It's it's not even funny, but yeah, that's fun. I love those games. I absolutely love them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I you and me, I think we'd have a fun time doing it in co-op. To be honest, I'll probably think about that later. Yeah, it would be up for that. I'll help you anytime. But uh, going back to the Chalice Dungeons, I would say. The cursed ones, I think it was cursed or defiled ones. I think there, I know there was two. Like it, it boosts your stats. Yeah, it's all, it's, yeah, it's just challenge. It's challenge. They really cut your power in half. <laughs> it's it's hard. Oh my gosh, it it drove me crazy when I was trying to get through like one of them because. I mean, I've seen so many people play Bloodborne in different ways. I mean, of course, everybody's going to do uh, their fighting styles. I have this fighting style. I don't do it from a distance. My mind tells me. If you want to kill something, go for it and kill it. Don't stand there at the back chucking a rock at it. That's not going to work. Uh, go and murder the thing. Sorry, that's an Afrikaans swear word. But um, go murder the thing and, and it'll die. It'll <laughs> just, and just keep on doing that. Or you I'm can shoot it in the face. Yeah, well, I've seen guys trying to beat bosses with just, just pistols. I have videos on my channel where I do that, taking a pistol and just taking out a boss. It takes longer. But again, it's like boxing, man. If you think about it, you're not going to stand in the ring with an opponent and wait for him to come forward to you. If you go to him first and start hitting him, that's what you want to do. Get rid of the enemy. No, oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> in some cases, though, you do have to like hit hit it with like your hunter's pistol in like certain arees because then it gives you the yeah, just, visceral yeah, attack too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love my visceral attacks. I really love that. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> Mortal Kombat written all over it too. 
yes, I haven't played Mortal Kombat in years. You know, I'm, I'm actually lucky to be one of those guys who grew up when Mortal Kombat came out mm-hmm. in the arcades. And I remember first seeing the very first Mortal Kombat. And it was like, whoa, I love this. I really love this. So much money spent with those machines, you know, chucking quarters and whatever. And, and then eventually I got my first um, Sega Genesis machine. And uh, that was the first game I bought was the very first Mortal Kombat. I still have my Genesis and it still works. After all these years, it still works. Unbelievable. Wow. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to Sega. I, I don't know. Are they technically still around? But I guess they're kind of faded from like, Sega, what they used to be. Yeah, I don't think they're, they're doing games as much uh, as they used to. But I think it's still like a side company they still have. But they are still, well, I guess they... But they're not as big as all the bigger boys nowadays, you know. Well, I think I was reading a or watching a video, I should say. I was watching a YouTube video that talked about it, and I guess all the major players, I guess like the Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, I think it was all of them, and they wanted to buy them out so they could incorporate them mm. into their company. Mm-hmm. They turned them all down, even though it was clear that Sega was going nowhere. I think like the like the very last video, it was almost like it might have been Sony. Mm. I could be wrong, but I think the last game I bought that had anything to do with Sega is uh, on the PlayStation 2. They made a compilation of all the classic Sega games, you know, Golden Axe and Street, uh, Streets of Rage and, uh, you know, all those games, Altered Beast and all those. Uh, and that was actually on, a, on a, a PlayStation 2 game that you can play, which is kind of cool. Then you don't have to take out your old machine and the cartridges and all that stuff. So, uh, sorry, some stuff popping up here. Yeah. Go wait. Mm-hmm. Have you always been a Sony player, or have you also played with uh, some of the Xbox at times? You know what? I tried playing Xbox. I have nothing against Xbox, but I, I think it, it depends on what machine you start off on. <laughs> if you if you start off on a PlayStation on a Sony system, then an Xbox controller is going to feel funny. If you start off on an Xbox, then a Sony controller is going to feel funny. So for me, it was Sony, and it's always been Sony. Uh, Nothing against Xbox, nothing. But it's just not. It's just not for me. I think it was always because you had to like only play like certain games. Like Gears of War, for instance, was for uh-huh. Xbox, and then back in PS3, uh-huh. back one of the very early games was a Resistance. Those uh, kind of games. Those were only for Sony. Gears of War was for the Xbox. So it was only like you had to like basically pick and choose which one or you get yeah, I, miss, I missed out on the whole PlayStation 3 thing the first PlayStation I ever owned was a 2 and then I went from 2 to 4 I missed the 3 hmm. and now I am trying to get my hands on a PS5 but yes it's expensive man <laughs> it's uh, it's a very expensive little toy that and uh, yeah I have I have four kids to feed so hmm. uh, no PlayStation I mean not real kids I mean like my little puppies uh-huh. I don't have kids. It's my doggies. <laughs> so yeah, no, 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 no. PS Five, maybe this year. I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Eventually. What kind of dogs do you have? Are they like small Yorkies or something? No, I have two Pekingeses and uh, two. What do you call them? Two uh, pavement specials. Two poodles that look like something. But I love them. They're my kids, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're my kids. It's, uh, family, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, my my eldest my eldest Pekingese, she's uh she's a bit old. She's turning twelve now this year. Mm. And uh she's almost completely blind. So uh we have to help her off the bed and take her outside to do her business and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with her except for the fact that she can't see anymore. She's still very frisky for her age. But uh I have a very soft heart when it comes to my animals. Mm. And uh so I, I can't do that thing, you know. If she falls over, then it's fine. I'll let nature take it, take its course. Yeah. But uh, big guy, small heart, you know how it works. Actually, no, Mike, <laughs> Mike Few, he's got pretty much about everything. Video gamer, drummer, animal lover. How about that? Hey, man, there's a, there's a couple more things, but we can't mention it on here. Then people might get scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or people might get scared, man. I don't think we should. Yeah, I think we should get back to where we were. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that for the mysteries of life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
uh go back to your other channels yeah. uh, the two well you said one was a horror one so we'll talk about that in a little bit but the music one for your drumming and mm -hmm. sometimes your collaborations too mm -hmm. You were also known mm -hmm. for bringing out the blindfold challenge too. I guess uh, what made you think of that? Uh, this thing that we've been struggling now to get our interview going, you know, the whole load cheating thing? Yeah. That actually started it. One day I was in the studio, I was busy working. And of course the power went off without me knowing that it's going to be load cheating. Um, and I was still sitting behind my kit and it was pitch black in here. I thought, oh, well, just practice some rudiments while I'm sitting there. I thought, well, okay, I can feel where my snare is. I can feel where my toms are. It would be interesting to see how other drummers experience this type of thing. But, yeah, of course, you can still see a little bit if you're sitting. So why not, why not blindfold yourself and just see what drummers do behind this? Now, I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, other... Uh, blindfold guys play on YouTube. I mean, this it's not a completely new thing. Mm. I mean, I've seen guys from nine years ago, seven years ago, a couple of months ago who did this, but it was just like for them to put out a video. I don't think it was a thing where they included other drummers from YouTube, and that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to bring the, the drumming community together and just have fun. This is the, <clears throat> this is the main thing about this thing. It's just to have fun. Not to tell anybody, hey, look, you can't, you don't know your kid, or you're playing like an ass, or whatever. It's it's to have fun. It's just to have fun. I mean, let's admit, this world is such a crazy place at the moment. There's so much bad stuff and negative stuff happening. So why not just have a little bit of fun? It's uh, That's the only reason I'm doing that, or the only thing. I am very excited about it because I was editing the, the compilation this morning with the ones that I have received so far. And I think we're close to almost 30 drummers. Hmm. That's uh, that's actually uh, participated in this. And I mean, you're talking about guys here who, who would never do stuff like this. Guys, I didn't expect to do this. And the compilation is turning out to be very interesting because it goes from rock music to metal music to pop music to it, the, <laughs> that mashup is going to be so diverse. It's it, it's gonna it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be very cool. I thought I would get one from you as well. I haven't received one yet. No, I haven't got around to it yet, Dan. Sorry, I've kind of been a little busy. I it's actually wow. our business working at two jobs and then also trying to do this podcast and editing episodes and stuff like that. At times, I'm also a little hard pressed to do a drum cover, and I should have did it for this one this week because it was it was a little bit of a short song, but it wasn't like an overtly difficult kind of song. And I've oh, actually, been, I've well, actually. Been, you're talking about your last, your last cover that we saw today. That's actually very cool, man. Very, very well played. Very well played. Thank you. I said it's here. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. That one, actually, I think I I'd improvised. I don't know if it was exactly played like that, but I just wanted to just throw something together because that was like what I was feeling. So. Sounds so, sounds okay to me, man. If my head goes like this when I'm listening to a cover, then I know somebody's doing something well. <laughs> The like, universe yeah. is interacting and loves it. That's what. Oh we're yeah, doing. oh yeah, definitely. definitely <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for the comment. I will eventually get to it. And originally, I was actually thinking of doing two birds with one stone because I didn't actually pay tribute yet to Taylor Hawkins, who had recently passed. And I, oh yeah, I had actually thought to do Best of You while blindfolded. That way, it was a two birds one stone. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean. Um, it's the 21st here already. You're still in the past. I'm already in the future. Um, I am trying to get all the, the videos together before, say, the 25th. So I can have at least enough time to compile the whole thing mm -hmm. and, you know, just make a decent looking video and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting in the wings. If you, I mean, I'm still waiting for two drummers contacted me uh, tonight that said they were going to do it as well. Plus, there was a new guy that I've never heard about, and he subscribed to my channel, and he said, no, he, he only saw this now. Can he still take part? I said, yes, of course. I mean, yeah, the, the more people I have, I, I, I expected maybe five guys to do it. I didn't expect this to happen. It, it, it's big. That's a hell of an achievement, big. too. Yeah, that's a hell of an achievement. I'm, I'm very happy about that one. Really. Yep. 
there are some more challenges that I am working on in my circus up here, uh, but I'll keep that on the back burner until the time is right. <laughs> I think it could be there's there's some there's some more irons in the fire if I can put it that way. We should get into a rising action before we reach the climax of the story. How about that? Yeah. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah. Originally, I wanted to ask drummers to play, you know, wearing skimpy underwear because I see that's the big thing on YouTube. <laughs> if you get a, <laughs> yeah, if you, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, Brian, but sometimes you you get this. Sometimes you get these very talented drummers, but they're wearing almost nothing at all, and I promise you that's why they're getting millions of views. So, like the super <sighs> rep kind of guys too, or the nice hot chick behind the drum kit too. No, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the, the, the super sexy chick. That's what I'm talking about. And I, that kind of makes me angry because that's not why people are clicking on it. I mean, sometimes some of these these people can play very well, but why look like a uh, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that that was one of the things I wanted to do. I asked my buddies to put on some skimpy underwear. And let's see what happens, but I'm not sure people will do that. <laughs> I guess it's I mean, comfortable I taking the shirt I off, too. Look, I mean, this is me saying this. I would look very cuck in the song, really. They've outlawed whaling here in South Africa, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I might take you up on that challenge, but I think I would have to see somebody else Ooh. do it first. No, I guess I'll better do, I'll, I better do it first, first thing. All right. We'll I'm, not a, I'm not afraid of making people laugh. That's, that's that's what we should do. I always tell people one thing to remember. Time. For me, time is an illusion. We tend to think we have time. We don't. It goes by so fast. So when you maybe have an idea, just do it. <laughs> don't wait until tomorrow because maybe tomorrow won't be there. That's, that's just the way. No, it's just the way it is, yeah. yeah, it's just the way it is. All right. Well, uh, let me know eventually when you do get around to that. I'll, I'll check it out and I'll see if I'll take up on your challenge. You see, I'm stirring Brian's brain here now. Yep. <laughs> well, it's like you said, hey, you only live once. Might as well go ahead and have fun with it, too. Yeah, we can. Um, maybe we should call it the Motley Crew drum challenge. <laughs> uh, we all play girls, girls, girls. And. Uh, you know, where uh, or, or looks like kill. We'll try something like that. Yes, I don't know. There's not a big enough cow in this world to give me the leather that I need. <laughs> I mean, but you're talking about a lot of leather that I need. You guys can get away with a little bit of, you know. Or we can just dress up like Kiss, do like all the makeup and everything, get the doggy collars all around our necks and stuff like that. You're starting to scare me, Brian. You're starting to show me a little bit of a the dark side of the force. I'm, I'm wondering what I'm wondering what you're doing over there where you live, running around the house. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk later. And no, no, no. I'm just throwing ideas out there. We're not trying to get entirely dark here. I'm just throwing ideas. Yeah, out dark, there. Dark, dark colors and the next. Okay, I, I tell you what. If we do this, we're only going to do it with whips. We're going to hit the symbols with whips. <laughs> All right. I like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right cool. but, uh, jump into your last channel now uh that one's about the horror movies i guess what was your first mm -hmm. horror movie okay when you ask when you when you ask me that question do you mean the first horror movie i liked or the first one i remember seeing i guess remember seeing hmm. it's probably why it's um my all-time favorite movie. It's The Exorcist. Mm, good choice. And um, that movie still to this day, I don't care what people say, it's one of the scariest movies ever. Mm. Just because, not because of the gore. Nowadays, people think if you see a movie and it's overflowing with blood, then it's a horror movie. I am the guy who likes the psychological side of horror. And that's exactly what The Exorcist does. It scares you from in here. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, the gore in The Exorcist is it's bad. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff that happens in there that's very. I can understand why it was so shocking when it came out. Uh, I mean, that was 1973 when that movie came out, and it was whew, whoa. Now, give me psychological horror, and uh, I'm happy. I mean, I can only say bless my mom because she was one of those very cool parents who didn't have a problem with me watching late night horror movies. And I guess that's kind of what's taken me on this whole journey of the, the movie stuff that I love so much. And I mean, yeah, I can go on for hours and hours and hours about what types of movies I like and actors and stuff. But yeah, The Exorcist comes to mind as you, the first one. Do you mainly go with the psycho psychological horror kind of movies? Or do you also throw in the gore ones every now and again? But I mean, when the when the gore starts coming out, then people start having fun. I don't mind gore at all. I mean, there's there's movies out there that's... Uh, it's kind of funny to me nowadays how people used to be about blood and guts in movies. Oh, it's so disgusting. It's so this, it's so this. But then you get series a series like Ash vs. Evil Dead that came out a couple of years ago. And that thing is overflowing with blood and guts. And everybody's having a good time. So it just shows you how the world has changed, what they consider to be shocking. I don't know what a movie can do nowadays to shock people anymore because I think we've all been so desensitized to... I mean, yeah, you, Oh, look at her head just cut off. Oh. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what do you need to do to shock people nowadays? And I mean, there's some pretty bad movies out there. I mean, there's, uh, I've gone into the whole thing for years and years and years. There's some stuff out there that's really, really bad movies. Yeah. Not bad in the sense it's a crappy movie. It's like, whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, that shocks you to the core in a way. Like, oh, oh boy, I hope that never happens to me. Definitely, definitely. I know with me, it was the Saw movies that I got into, and it was me and a friend who did a, the first five, I think. I don't think we did the whole series, but I know we did, like, the first two were at least good, because there was a little bit of that psychological humor, too, or not humor, horror, <laughs> humor, psychological, psychological horror humor. that was played into it, and... Uh, I I love I love the Saw movies. I, I I know a lot of them. Uh, a lot of people say yeah, you know, they became worse and worse as they went on. And uh, for me, it was brilliant storytelling. Yes, it did go a little bit over the top as the the series went on with all the, the traps and stuff. It got more bloody and bloody and bloody. I don't mind that. <laughs> I I always when I look at a movie, let's say a movie like that. I mean, would you be happy to be caught up in a situation like that? No. no. Of course not. And that's what scares the living hell out of people. That's what's supposed... I have this thing. I don't know if this happens. Oh, it's just me who sees it this way. I'll be driving somewhere. And you're on this road somewhere. And you see a little house there in the distance. Now you think, okay, there's a house. What's going on in that house? And then you just drive past. I'm not afraid of devils and de demons and spooks i'm more afraid of the person living next door to me <laughs> because freddy krueger is a funny guy with his knives but i can tell you somewhere and this happens don't tell me it doesn't happen somewhere in, ha in a house right now something sinister is happening that's more horrific than a movie oh yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah that happens every day mm. And sometimes it seems like they do like a stereotype where it's like taking place in a crappy house, for instance, or it's like not very well refurbished or anything like that. And then it's like somewhere in the basement and it's like all run down and everything and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at a, a movie like American Psycho, that Christian Bale movie, mm -hmm. I mean, he, his apartment looks all pristine and clean and everything. If you look at the movie like The Dentist uh, with Gorbin Benson, he he has a thing for neat, neatness and cleanliness, and I mean he's a dentist. I mean of course, but yeah, I know what you mean with the old broken down house and the basement flooding and it's all garbage and death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So chains. No, I love, I, love, I, love, I love my horror movies, man. I mean, yeah. If you talk about chains, I'm an absolute 
a Hellraiser fanatic. Pinhead, the Cenobites, so cool. Mm. It's so cool. That's pretty uh, sweet. Just, just a big fan. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing with me was it was a cringy moments thinking like, oh boy, that must hurt like hell whenever you see someone maybe it shows like an ankle twisting or something like that or something getting pulled out and someone's like oh boy I sure hope that's not me actually one funny it was kind of funny too at the time but uh in one of the Saw movies one of the guys head just got squished like a grapefruit because of two giant ice blocks just came down and just squished his head I just remember me and a friend were like oh god almighty well I can tell you that I probably probably if, if uh, that should happen you probably won't feel it but yeah, okay. Let me ask you this: Out of all the Saw movies you've seen, your favorite trap out of all the movies that you can remember? Ooh, I didn't see all of them. So I think I think the farthest me and a friend of mine got was year four or five, I believe. I wish I could remember. Okay. Right now. I think the one I always seem to remember because it was advertised a good bed. It was one of the women who had the thing in her rib cage here. Oh, it, okay. You know, it came over and just ripped her open, even though she, Look, she, she, yeah, she could, she tried to escape, but she couldn't get out. Yeah. Well, that, the thing that, was, she, that, she got the lock. She had completed that challenge, but she, I mm. guess they were so lodged in her. It was not like she could just pull them right out. No, that trap was actually, I mean, if you, if you know the, the franchise, you know, that trap was designed for her not to get out. Mm. She wasn't supposed to get out. Now for me, the, the favorite trap was called the rack. It's that one where the guy was, he was standing like this, and then the the, the 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 mechanism starts moving that way, and it turns his arm that way, and then it turns his arm that way, oh, and then it turns his legs outside from the inside out, and then all of a sudden it starts turning his head. I know this sounds weird. It's, it's just a very gruesome, scary trap. I wouldn't want to be caught in that thing. I mean, that's, <laughs> all the traps are great, but I think that one that's the one I remember the most, and I think that's my favorite. That was that uh, African American guy. I do remember that, and I had another friend over, and he can't do blood and guts for some reason. It seems like make him nauseous or something. So uh -huh. he, he's kind of freaking out when uh, that scene's happening, and we had to like black out the screen so I couldn't see it. You know, the funny thing is, yeah, I mean, you just touched upon it now. If you watch that same scene, any scene in a horror movie, turn down the sound. Not nearly as scary. Just kind of sound watching. plays Just... a wonderful sound plays a wonderful part in movies. If you can't hear the bone cracking, then you're not going to go out. If you see the bone cracking, it's going to be like, hmm. Sound is a wonderful thing. Sound is a wonderful thing. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It, definitely. I guess which uh, saw movie was your favorite? First one. First definitely one. the first definitely the first one i kind of like the whole idea that you didn't know who john kramer was until he woke up at the end of the movie lying there in the pool of blood while being there the whole time that was uh, yeah no the first one definitely i i know a lot of people give uh part two and part three a lot of flack uh i think out of all seven or eight movies or is there eight i think there's eight movies now the first three, it's that's those are my favorites, definitely. Absolutely, yeah, I would agree. When they when they, st when they started, you know, adding in more people and this guy, he, he was an accomplice even before the movie started, and this and this, then it starts to unravel a bit. But um, no, the first three, definitely, definitely. For me. Three, I think, started getting a lot more gory. What, oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> No, I, we could, I, would, I would love, I, that's another thing that I would have loved to do when I was uh, younger. I wanted to be a special makeup artist, uh, effect artist, because I look up to guys like Tom Savini so much. Uh, to create uh, all that gore and guts out of nothing. That's so cool to me. Uh, unfortunately, over here in South Africa, we don't, we have film schools and stuff like that, but not not to the extent that you guys have over there in the States and stuff. So, um, unfortunately, I missed that boat. But I do do some special effects stuff on my channel and uh, the videos. My mom, bless her heart, she's sometimes my uh, 
accomplice in this. You know, when I did my look back on uh, Reanimator, <laughs> she walks into the studio with a box and she places it here on the table in front of me and I'm filming the thing and if you go towards the box, my head is in the box. Oof. And I'm introducing the video and hello and what, what, what. And that's the start of the video. Another one is I did a, a video for the Evil Dead. And I mean, if you know the Evil Dead franchise, you know that Ash cuts off his hand. And the hand gets possessed and all that stuff. So I can't really cut off my hand. So I figured out a way to cut off my hand, but not cut off my hand. See what I'm doing here. You guys need to go and check out the Nightmare Cinema Club. That's what you need to go and do. Check out my other channel <laughs> and see the other stuff I get up to. Yep. Uh, I guess what made you start that third channel, the one that was based on the horror movies and stuff like that? It's just a love of film. Just a love of film. Since, uh, ever since I can remember, you remember I just said to you now, sound plays a very... Uh, big part in a, a movie or a video or anything. I remember when I was a kid, you, I would, if I saw a horror movie on TV, back then we didn't have digital recorders or anything. You used to, you could maybe, if you were lucky, you would have a little tape recorder and you could record the sound from the TV. And I would start making my own little stories, not movies, I didn't have a camera make my own little audio stories, you know, take a screen from this movie and tell a little bit and then all of a sudden you hear somebody falling down, but it's all sounds that you've recorded out of the TV. And then as soon as I started getting into loving movies, I think what interested me more, of course, if the story is well and if it's shot well, then I'm hooked. But it's always interesting to me to see what's going on behind the scenes. Who the director is? How does he see life? Um, why is he shooting it this way and not that way? So I think that's why I started my channel, just to give a little bit more storytelling, but the behind the scenes things. Hmm. Actually, that's pretty hmm. sweet too. There's actually a metal band that I listen to called Mortician. I don't know if you, mm -hmm. you know the band? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they incorporated those horror elements into it. They'll pull scenes from like maybe certain movies and put in their music before it jumps into the, the straight death metal and stuff like that. That's the thing, but I love my I love my metal music. I would love to do more metal music on my my music channel as well, but if it's a bit difficult doing a lot of double bass things if you're only using your arms. That's I mean it gets very fast. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, absolutely. So uh, yeah, I do touch on the metal thing uh, a bit. Well, I've done some heavy stuff on my channel, but um, I would love to do more. You know. Some are more Marf, some more stuff like that, and some more Hammerfall, and more. Unfortunately, I can't cover bands like uh, Iron Maiden because it gets blocked um, over in South Africa. Really? I can only do certain Metallica songs because it gets blocked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can I, I can't do a single ACDC song. Seriously? Get, gets blocked <laughs> completely. Yeah, and I mean, that's the type of songs you want to do on your channel. If you want to drum to that, you want to do guitar stuff with that. Uh, we, yeah, I can't do certain Eagles songs. I mean, I love the Eagles. Uh, a simple song like Hotel California. I can't, can't do a guitar cover or a drum cover. No way. Mm. It's blocked. The only closest thing I got to ACDC was I did You Shook Me All Night Long on my channel, but I used the Six Feet Under, the death metal version. Uh, and yeah, the funny yeah. thing is, and the funny thing is that one has no restrictions, not even a copyright. No. That's right. They did a they did that whole Back in Black album uh, as part of yeah, the... it's it's from it's from the graveyard. Yeah, that's the, what the album is called. Mm. The but they did the whole Back in Black album. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I could do that, <laughs> but I couldn't do ACD. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it makes no now, sense. YouTube is a weird. It's, it's a weird beast. But hey, man, it's it's. I mean. What I don't get is why why we're getting copyrighted anyway, because we as drummers, we're not making money out of this. We're actually promoting their music and just showing our love as fans. So I can't really understand why some bands are fine with this and some people are just total... <clears throat> but hey, they make the rules, not me. Apparently. But yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, it's almost like 
if if I was like making money, it was just solely coming to me, then you could definitely say it. Then there's a legal issue because it's my music and stuff like that. If it's oh. just doing it for fun, you're not making any money. I don't see why it should be taken down because I actually ran into it it's in like- my first episode, I should say, because back then I was just kind of doing a little bit of a talk show, this S uh-huh. kind of way. And I was trying to do a Betty White memorial kind of thing. Oh, uh, she, yeah. She did one with a death metal kind of SNL skit. And I was trying to show that, but YouTube wouldn't let me it got copyright wow. and I said, Nope, you cannot you cannot put that up. I see I see another thing that's popping up nowadays is most drummers, I've seen this with a couple of guys. Some some songs would be they would have done a couple a song maybe a year ago or a couple of months ago. And it's been on their channel till now and then all of a sudden it's just taken down. So how long does it take for YouTube to realize this? I've seen this with a couple of friends of mine. All of a sudden, that song is gone. Okay, where's the song? No, he doesn't know. It's it's it's, it's very weird. It, I, I don't know, man. The funny thing is, I mean, you would think uh, coming back to the gaming thing, Bloodborne is such a big game. Dark Souls is such a big. Elden Ring is a brand new game. That's going to be big. They yeah. allow they allow you to put out videos. I mean, I'm putting out videos. Uh, about their games and there's no copyrights or anything. Sometimes I do use some music that's, that says it's royalty free, but sometimes it doesn't work. But if I, if, if I compare it to my music channel, my gaming channel, that's crazy the restrictions you get. Mm-hmm. Really. It's, it's, I did a song the other day by Tina Turner, uh, Steamy Windows. Blocked completely. It's Tina Turner. Yeah. It's a big name. It's a big deal. It's, it's Tina Turner. I mean, what the hell? But here's the funny thing. There is one video on my channel. The song is called Better Be Good To Me. No problems. I took the song after that one, which is Steamy Windows, off the same album, Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yep. It's, I think it's more government-oriented, really, because in the States here, at least, they just say like it, they'll put a copyright on it but they'll still run ads on it and stuff like that and for at least my that's, job, another, was, that's another funny thing you're bringing up now i mean most i i, I was always under the the uh the the idea that you have to be monetized in order for ads to be shown on your channels well, that's just what it says uh, i don't know if it's, it's actually running any ads so i don't know that's no i mean i only i only have about 200 I think I'm on 205 subscribers now on my channel. And sometimes when I play my own video, there's an ad on it. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, I don't really I don't, I don't know how I, I, don't, I, don't that. Make, I don't make music to make money. I do it to entertain my friends, to entertain my fans, and just to try at least put a positive message out there that you can still... Even though you are disabled, you can still make music. It's 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 harder. It's definitely harder, but it shouldn't stop you. That's that's just the way I see it. Yeah. Is that what you plan to do with all your channels on YouTube going forward? Yeah, yeah. That's. It it would be lovely if I could be like Mr. Beast and make ten million dollars in a minute, but <laughs> but I mean, let's be let's be honest here. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't think in my lifetime I'll ever get there. No, for me, it's just sending out a positive message and trying to encourage people. I mean, that's one thing that I am very proud of. I have had some uh, disabled people contact me and say, okay, they came across my channel. How can they learn how to start playing drums? Then you start thinking, okay, well, get in contact with this person and maybe trying to help them. I mean, no single disability is ever the same. I'm lucky to still have my arms. But you will never see in a video that I can pick up both my arms at the same time. Because I'm paralyzed so high up, I have no balance. I don't know if you notice, when I play drums, I sit fairly backwards, sit like this. So my arms are resting on the the side pieces. So I have to play like that, because if I do that, then I'm off balance. (laughs) So I have to play like that. So that's, that's challenging, but no, but no, if you can, uh, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's definitely one of the big messages you have to get people out in these days, too. 
I guess, uh, yeah, no. how bad did COVID affect you, especially considering how bad it was everywhere else? And I guess, uh, was it? Well, OBS, great... OBS, OBS in South Africa, it was quite bad. In our community, uh, I live in a very uh, small little town called Coster in South Africa. It's a, very, it's a small little farming community. Over here, I don't know if it's the same as, uh, as what it was. With people overseas, they don't want to get their injections and stuff, their vaccines, because they're going to spy on you and all that stuff. <laughs> but um, I, I got mine, luckily. I, I went pretty early for mine, me and my mom. And I did have COVID, uh, the third wave, about January. I got it. I got the COVID thing. The only thing that I went through is just the, the pain in the muscles and some headaches and stuff. But I think if I wasn't vaccinated, then it would have been way worse. Talking about my friends in the music, music industry of the in South Africa, they were hit very hard because they couldn't do gigs anymore. I mean, there were all these lockdown restrictions. They couldn't get any work. So most people tried doing, people who could afford it to do, you know, online shows, YouTube live streams, Facebook live streams. And uh, it was hard. It was really hard. Uh, I think the first time when COVID hit, I mean, that was two years ago, the day after my birthday, we got our restrictions. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave my house for a year. Oh, yeah. I didn't go outside. I was, I mean, because I'm a paraplegic, I'm more susceptible to becoming sick mm. and stuff. And because I'm a smoker, I mean, as soon as I, if, if I was to interact with somebody who was really sick, I probably would, would have died. Same with my mom. I mean, my mom is an elderly lady. So um, we just, we just stayed away from people. It's better now. It's much better now. But I mean, it's still there. And I wonder if it's ever going to go away. That's the that's the thing. I think that's the unfortunate thing. I, I think it's just going to keep adapting really at this point because I know on the news they've kind of been saying like it's like coming in these different variants at some point. Obviously with spring and so summer. I see there's an, according to the news it looks like there's a new outbreak somewhere there in in, uh, in China again. Yeah, they, Like I said, I don't know if this ever is going to go away but hey man we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know how many cigarettes I've smoked today. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no, you're good. But I know China's, theirs was like a zero COVID kind of policy. So they would like keep you indoors. They probably do all sorts of tests and stuff like that. I know a couple of weeks ago, I was talking with a fellow drummer from Greece, uh, Stamatis Kikes. And, uh, yeah, I saw he, that. Yeah, I he saw told that. me, he told me like his country. And I think in terms of like saying China, Peru, I think Greece would be in like number three on the list for like most stringent COVID policies. So I didn't okay. I think he also still had like some uh, mandates and stuff like that where you couldn't even go out to get a coffee. Maybe at most all you could do is just get groceries and that was about it. Was wow. was that kind of how it was with uh, your restrictions? It was like just groceries? Yeah. Didn't really... Same thing here, but you couldn't go anywhere. You it was the, you could go and get the, ma the basic necessities and that was it. For the first year, it, it was crazy over here. Really, it was. Because people, I, I'm pretty sure you guys had it over there as well. Pe some people adhere to the rules, and some people just don't give a, a um, you know, they don't give anything. <laughs> it's, um, the rats behind. I'll just say that. And that's the and that's the people who um, that really makes me angry because they're the people complaining when they get sick. Oh, why am I getting sick? You're not following the rules. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I didn't like wearing a mask like the next person. I mean, but is it needed? Of course. Um, I always say, you know, stupidity is not a disability. Really, it's a choice. But they sure make it sound like one. Mm. Yeah. Actually, it was more of, in a, speaking of that kind of quote you made there, it's kind of like SpongeBob. Stupidity isn't a virus, but it sure sounds like one. So. Yeah. No, I don't know, man. It's. But it's, it's better now. I mean, we're still safe. It's kind of weird how this has taken a new life of its own, if you think about it. Uh, most people now, when they go out anyway, they, they put on their masks anyway. It's become a way of life in a, in a weird way. I mean, nobody knew that something like this was going to happen in our lifetime again. I mean, the last big virus, if you think that almost wiped out the planet, was the Black Death. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've had the Spanish flu and the, the whatever flu and what, what, what. But this thing was big. This thing was big. 
and it hit a lot of South Africans. Uh, it, just hope it goes away. It must just fly away. That would be nice. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. Yeah. But uh, talk about your uh, drum set. Uh, I, it was obviously Electric Pad 1. Is that like a Roland or what kind of brand is it? Uh, it's a Roland. It's a Roland TD-15. It's one of the old Roland TD-15s. But uh, I can tell you now, and I've said this in some of my videos, I mean, I've been using it for a couple of years now. I'm still blown away about what that little kit can do. Like I said earlier, I don't use any plugins or any external drum stuff. Um, it's a the way it's there. That's the way it's set up. It comes out of the factory like that. It has that supernatural uh, processor inside of it, which Roland did with some of their kits, and that I really like because you you kind of get some of those acoustic feels on that kit. I mean, obviously, I would love to be able to play normal drums. That's why I went to the electric kit because that's the only place I could switch around the triggers so I could incorporate a kick again and play that way. The only uh, additions that I've added to my kit, I used to have this very old Simmons percussion kit. You know this big Simmons pad that Rick Allen used when he started playing electric drums after he lost his arm? I, I have three of those and I'm basically using one for a China crash and the other one is a floor tom. So that's the only things I've added in on my kit, but everything else, standard. <laughs> standard, standard. Plus I like tuning my kit down very low uh, the the the, to the the toms the the snare is tuned down very low because I like that big thumping sound. If a snare is nice and high, that's fine. For some songs, it works, but for me personally, I I like the I like the heavy stuff. I like the boom. <laughs> I want the boom. boom. Here come the that's boom. That's what I want. All right. I want the boom. I'll, I'll do a Buddy Holly song. And it'll sound like the walls falling down. You know. <laughs> You'll be waking up the neighbors. They'll be coming and banging on your door before you know it. I have a PA system over there. Sometimes I do connect that just to, to jam out. I mean, most of the times when you're recording, you're recording with headphones, so you can't really uh, appreciate your sound. But you know, sometimes I connect my PA system and I just close the doors. And then whatever the neighbors think, well, sorry. Enjoy the music. <laughs> Enjoy the noise. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, right there. They're adding to the noise. How about that? We're adding to the noise. Right. Plus, this is a farming community. I live mainly between a lot of uh, elderly people, so they can't hear that well anyway. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. like a benefit. It's an unfortunate yeah. one, but it's at least it's at least good. It's not like young or any middle aged kind of man just coming over and. And I mean, if you something. you must remember now, Brian, if you live in South Africa and you play metal music and you play rock music and stuff over here, they're stuck on what the, what. South African music, if I can call it that. It's not my type of music. I, I have, like I said, I've been working in studios for years. So sometimes you have to record stuff like that and you have to do session work on stuff like that. But it's not my favorite type of music. Give me the hard edge stuff, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I don't like songs about... Um, what example can I give you? Oh, I love you so much. Oh, you're lovely. Oh. I mean, it's, that's kind of I, I have no problem. I have no problem with country music at all. I just think country music, if they played it backwards, that would be better because then the guy would get his truck back and his wife and his cornfield. You know, because in every country song he loses that stuff. Mm. So just play it back and get it back. Yeah, <laughs> we go back in time and correct everything. How about that? Something like that. And I mean, some of the some of the country music that I have heard, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't mind it, but oh, the horse died, horse yeah. sweet man, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, what brand are your sticks? Uh, I think I was trying to see what they were on some of your drum covers, but I don't think I could make it out. It's a uh, Zoljin Five A's. Zoljin 5A's. I, I tape I, I tape them up for better grip. Hmm. It's all in five hours. I mean, yeah. When I used to, when I used to play acoustic kits, I uh, used to use five Bs, but thicker sticks. But uh, the five A's work wonderfully. I mean, that's the fun part about an electric kit. You you don't have to have the bigger sticks to get the bigger sound. It just depends on how you set your settings and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, nice heavy 
fat sticks. Uh, who would you consider was like your uh, biggest influence when you start taking up drums? I guess obviously since you were more in the classic rock and then maybe some of the changes into metal going through the eighties there and even through the nineties. I guess who would you said is your biggest influence or influences? That's that's a very hard question to answer because there's so many great drummers. I mean you look at a guy like Buddy Rich he was doing blast beats before anybody even knew what a blast beat was. Mm. Um, guys like uh, Eric Singer, who plays drums for Kiss now. Eric Carr, who used to play drums for Kiss. Uh, Mike Portnoy. I mean, absolutely love what Portnoy does. I know people don't like what I'm going to say now. Lars from Metallica. Lars Ulrich, yeah. I like, I like him. He might not be as good now. <laughs> now, 20 years ago, he was very good. But ask yourself this question, would you still be, if Metallica is still one of the biggest metal bands in the world 40 years on, and he's still their drummer, so is he really that bad? No, I don't think so. Guys like Rick Allen, uh, I mean, what he overcame when he lost his arm <laughs> to play drums for one of the biggest rock bands that the world has ever seen. Uh, I mean, there's some local guys over here in this country that I love and admire, very close friends of mine. Uh, there's one guy who's called, uh, his name is Vinny Enrico. He actually played drums on one of my songs uh, on my channel. I mean, he's one of South Africa's best drummers. Mm. He's worked in countless studios. Mad respect. So it's a, it's a very hard question to answer. Most people, at least like most people that I've interviewed so far, they've been like saying like Neil Peart, and uh, I know Mike Potbury was another one. <sighs> uh, yeah, I mean, Neil Peart is definitely a great drummer. Rush is a great band. I mean, you can't deny what they did for for music and stuff. But no, there's, there's just too many drummers. There's just too many drummers. Uh, it, I, I guess it depends on the music style. I mean, if you like that punk type music then people would say Travis Barker if you like uh, reggae infused rock music you would say Steve Cooper uh, it, it's hard it's a, it's a hard question no no absolutely yeah, there's question. too many drummers there's too many bands I think if there's a drummer like that. which I could play like it would be Paul Toy because that guy is just a freak behind the kid he just um, no it's hard it's, it's hard question. I love all of them I love all of them. We'll do E, all of the above. How about that? All of the above. Yeah. All of the above. There we go. I mean, Miko McBride from Iron Maiden. I mean, that's the only metal guy I've ever seen that plays a single bass pedal. And you would never realize it if you watch him play. He's so fast. Uh, then you get a guy like George Coolias from Nile, who's insanely fast. People say, oh, he can't groove. I mean, can you, did you see what that guy can do with one foot? I mean, it, yeah. yeah, all of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned him too because I know I've always brought up George Coleus in uh, some of my interviews because I've I've always admired him as a drummer. Eventually, would like to get him on this podcast too, but I think we'll eventually we'll get there eventually. So hopefully, we'll yeah, I'll get there, man. You'll get it. Just keep on doing what you're doing, man. Absolutely. Just, uh, I think mm -hmm. I was trying to also poke Stamatis to eh, try to do something there, work some magic or something like that, but. We'll see what happens. So it's at least a good answer because I know what you mean too. But there's, there's, a, there's, there's, like a saying, there's, there's a saying that I live by. There's no shortcuts to a place we're going. You'll get there. Yep. The road we'll to hell is there. paved with good intentions. Of course. Like yeah, of course, man. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we are getting way too philosophical, unfortunately. So, uh, but. Hey. Philosophy is a good thing, man. It is, yeah. It's also good to it's share, too. Of you course. Up here. But we've now reached this part of the podcast where now you get a little freedom to ask me anything or if there's anything you would, would like to get off your chest. So have at it. How long have you been playing drums? Mine, 
I don't know how many times I brought it up in my interviews, but I've, I have told like some people who've asked it, but if I had to guess, it's been over a decade. Unfortunately, I lost count, but it feels like it's been well over a decade. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, now I'm going to ask you something about what I'm seeing in your room there. That's, this is going to be interesting. Uh, maybe. That rocking chair you know, is an altar. To too, so, I think... Mean, Good, 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 good answer. Good answer, man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I always think stuff like that is so cool. Oh, really? It kind of looks like the chair that Norman Bates' no, mother I think that's sang. just one of those things we're going to put on the back porch when I'm Ooh. 80 years old, just sipping on a beer or whatever I'm doing before I count the days. Or stuff like that. Okay, you mentioned beer. You mentioned beer now, so I'm going to ask you another question because me and Mike Conway had this conversation the other day. What's your drink of choice? Like, I want to boost my dad's credit score or something like that I asked for Long Island iced teas so that's at least the heavier drinks but at least when it's just like a single drink or something on tap uh, it sometimes varies but most of the times I like to get the apple ciders like the Angry Orchard it's usually my preferred choice the green apple actually that the green apple okay. is really good I really love the green apple and then okay. sometimes I mix with a Miller Lite at times Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I've been a I've been a whiskey drinker since I came out Jack of the Daniels womb. on the rocks. So. <laughs> so. No, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. I don't do, I do I don't do bourbon that much. Uh, the if I do bourbon, I'll do some Southern Comfort. But I'm really into yeah, Irish Jamison. whiskey. I really love my Jameson. Uh, I do Scotch and stuff, but I, I love my Irish Irish whiskey, not Jameson. That, that's my but yeah, like I say, I've been drinking whiskey since I, I can remember. I mean, the funny thing for me is I'm only, uh, I turned 42 this year. and uh, But after the life that I have had, it's, uh, I think my ID book says I'm 42, <laughs> but inside I'm, I'm about 150. It's, it's, um, it's one of those things. Yeah, I mean... Uh, a lot of people have asked me sometimes, yeah, you play drums. Sometimes they, they've noticed on your videos, you sit there with your eyes closed and stuff. And you, It's because, for me, music is my therapy. It's the way I uh, express what I'm feeling. I mean, the fact is, Brian, I mean, it's absolute hell to sit in a chair and not be able to do the things that most people take for granted. I see that on a daily basis. I see people complain about the simplest stuff. Um, I mean, I have a very thick skin when it comes to some things, but some things you just can't ignore. You know, do they really know how lucky and blessed they are? Um, um, yeah, look, you know, uh, I don't think people always realize how happy they are or how blessed they are to still have normal, simple functions in life. To do a simple thing like going to the bathroom hmm. <laughs> it's it's a thing people do every day guys like us it doesn't work that way hmm. um <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't work that way at all that's just a simple thing uh there's always health problems there's always pains and aches and stuff you 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 never know what's going on inside your body i mean if you start feeling sick you can't say oh i have a pain in my my stomach because you can't feel your stomach. Um, there, there has been instances where I've had terrible um, uh, injuries. I once broke up one of my toes without realizing it. Uh, <laughs> because I just jumped off. I didn't, okay, I didn't jump off my chair. I fell out of my chair onto a mattress on the floor. It was Christmas Eve and we're going to watch some movies and stuff. And unfortunately, um, I mean, as you've noticed, I'm not a small guy. As I was going down with my foot pieces, oh, my foot slipped back and my weight basically pressed down on my one toe. Oof. And we heard a little bit of a, and a oh, whatever. Oh, little. And, oh, oh, there's some blood. Oh, oosh, oh, the toe is off. The doctor's face when I went to the emergency room was kind of funny. I went in there and said, hey, make a plan here. <laughs> so, Work your magic. Yeah, do your thing. And he said to me, should I inject you? 
for pain. I said, I'm a paraplegic. I don't feel anything. You can go. Are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. So he starts working. I'm sitting there talking to people. How are you today? How was your Christmas? Blah, blah, blah. So in back. But, uh, <laughs> so but, back in the place. It's, um, yeah, it, uh, I think, I just think people should be more appreciative of what they have. But, uh, that's their choice at the end of the day. You can, you can tell people and you can give people advice and stuff, but did I think this way when I was still a normal man? Probably not. Uh, did I do things in my life that I wish I didn't do? You know, s stupid things? Of course. <laughs> I'm a human being. Uh, yeah. well, I mean, being in this chair for 19 years that's a long what that's a long time mm -hmm. it's a very long time but i'm trying to make the best of what i can with what i have left and uh that's all i can do so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely all right but uh, is there uh, anything else you wanted to throw like any other questions or any other wor words of wisdom you want to get off your chest before we jump to the last question words of wisdom Really, anything you just want to get off your chest, like anything else, outside of smoke. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to edit out all the cigarettes. I look like a chain smoker. No, 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 you're good. You're good. You can it. You're good. You're good. It's free. No, you uh, want to be yourself? no, not, not, nothing that I can think of now. I mean, if I want to, like I said at the beginning of this thing, you just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, just keep chasing whatever. You want to accomplish and i promise you all the drummers on the community and more people will follow i mean i'll i'll be there definitely all right thank you so much brother all right so we'll jump to the last question and pretty much throughout this whole video you've been kind of giving me different answers on it but i always like to give like messages messages of hope to people out there especially now with coming out of covid and everything so what sort of hopeful message could you give to other musicians like us or disabled people? Don't let your um, situation, whatever you find yourself in, don't ever let that hold you back. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, but it's, it's going to be harder later in life if you didn't try so try at least once to do something if you always wanted to try and play guitar give it a go if you wanted to try playing drums give it a go at least you said you if you if you succeed yeah great if you don't you tried that's all i, I can say no i lived that's my way of saying, like, I at least know that I lived and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, the, there's this saying that's always funny. People always say, you only live once. Mm -hmm. That's it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. You die once. You only die once. You, you live every day. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. In a certain manner of speaking. Because obviously yeah. there have been those people with the near-death experiences, so it might mm. it might be a little bit of an exception. There. But I, I, I know what that's like because in 2018, I had two heart attacks. Oh, God. I got very sick. Uh, uh, if you're a disabled person, you're very prone to get sicker quicker, quicker because your immune system is really not as good as it should be. Um. The first heart attack I had, I came out of the shower. I was actually, uh, I had some infection in my body mm. and I got septicemia. Uh, so I was already in septic shock by that point. And uh, I remember I came out of the shower, I got on the bed, my mom was helping me. And uh, all of a sudden I just felt, okay, now something's wrong. And it's like I was being sucked into this weird warp and I could hear her shouting, but I couldn't respond. Mm. And I think it was about two minutes that I couldn't breathe. It was very long. It was scary. It was very scary. Got out of that 
go to Dr. Atia to the house. And he said, well, I need to go to a hospital as soon as possible because my body is going into septic shock. And I went to a hospital about two days after that. And in the hospital, I started feeling, oh, hell, here we go again. And as I was getting, you know, just getting checked out by the nurses and stuff, I just remember this very small, stubby South African nurse. I mean, they're quite sturdy over here. Gave me one hell of a smack. Now, in my head, it just went like, Otush! because I was already sitting like this. And that's when the second heart attack came in because she, she slapped me to keep me conscious. She <laughs> just said, be staying with me. And when I, all of a sudden, I just saw all these needles going into my arms. It was adrenaline, this and whatever. So, yeah, do I know what it's like to almost go? Yeah, yes. I've been there. It's scary. Yeah, it's I, I, I can imagine, too. That does sound pretty scary, it's too. Scary. Sometimes you do get, in my mind, sometimes I, I thought to myself, oh, why not just, you know, Let's just end this, you know. But I guess there's a better message still for me to put out there for somebody. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows how the universe works, my friend? Who knows? Yeah, nobody really knows how really anything works, really. I think yeah. my saying is nobody really knows anything. That's just what I say, too. But, yeah, like I said earlier, just do what you what, do, what you do, do the best what you can. If you try it, that's good enough. At least try. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But in closing, uh, since you're in South Africa, are you a little bit north of Johannesburg, or I guess? I'm about 150 kilometers from Johannesburg. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very, it's actually very close to me. I mean, most of the people that I've worked with, some of my very good uh, musician friends live close there. My, uh, the woman in my life, she lives, about 120 kilometers away from me. She lives just outside of Pretoria. Mm. So uh, that, uh, that kind of makes it hard. Can't see her every, every day like I would like to. But yeah, it's pretty close to the, to the big cities mm. and stuff. I guess, uh, I don't know if I'll eventually get out to South Africa, but for any tourists or any of like us drummers who want to go out to South Africa one of these days, what can you tell them about it and go and see? But there's a lot of things you can see in South Africa. I, I know a lot of people think you're going to find lions in the street and elephants in the backyards. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, of course, that's a completely that's a completely missed thing. I mean, I have so many people that I've, I've played games with over the years, and they always ask you the same question. So, is there rhinos? Yeah, of course, but they're not in my backyard or something like that. But there's a lot of uh, wildlife parks and stuff in various places in South Africa. I think if you ever want to see one of the, the nicest deserts, I, I know this is going to sound weird. Mm. If you want to go to Namibia and you want to see a beautiful desert, definitely go, go to Namibia. One of the best looking deserts you'll ever see in your life. The Kalahari is very cool. I know a very big uh, tourist attraction for overseas people. There's a place called Sun City. It's, uh, that's about 200 kilometers from where I live. No, not even that much. Wow. It's no, I'm lying. It's about a hundred kilometers from where I live. Mm -hmm. Very nice African experience. If you want to get into that old thing. No, a lot of, a lot of nice places. Oh, sweet. Just be, just be, just be warned. This country is, um, you'll probably arrive at the airport and your bag will get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just our day. How about that? It's like it's like it's like our South African uh, captain of the soccer team once said when the World Cup was over here. He said at a news conference, uh, "We're going to take the trophy. We're going to take it, even if we don't win it. We're going to take it. We're going to take it. It's all oh, that sort of thing." Next thing you know, you just say, "Mine, like mine, 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 mine," or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. Uh, no, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it has its challenges. I mean, this whole load shedding thing that we're going through now, it's, this has been going on for so long, and it's just because of bad infrastructure and people not doing their jobs. Of course. And it's very frustrating for us to work. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm looking at the, the clock on my screen. Uh, we're going to have load shedding again at 3 a.m. Mm. later on again. 
and that means we 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 had it now four times today. Oh god, mm. that you said it's just for like uh, is it like updates and stuff like that, or is it like just them fixing an infrastructure deal or something like that? That's the problem, right? They're not fix, fixing the infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, we'll pa- just keep it the same. Pa- pa- power stations keep conking in, and it's uh, let's just say the funds that's supposed to be used for stuff to be repaired, it doesn't get used for that. It's one of those situations, unfortunately. No, that's kind of the same way, in a certain uh, way, over in here too. So everybody does it's, it differently. It's, very, it's, it's a very frustrating thing. I mean, I don't like coming into my studio having to look at the clock the whole time. When I start working and, and I get into a groove, I really want to go and do my thing. I don't want to think, okay, well, I have to upload a video now. Okay, how much time do I have? Okay, wait, okay, now, wait, I need to answer that. Oh, oh, that's the kind of way that I'm working now. When we uh, talked about setting up this whole interview, I really wanted to do it, but like I said to you, I'm not sure if we're going to have power or internet. Mm. Because that's no, that's not a certainty. We, yeah, I, I guess, we were, I guess we were lucky in that in that sense to to have had this interview. Yeah, I was kind of getting a little worried too. I was thinking, like, especially when he froze there when we were kind of talking a little bit earlier. I was getting worried that mm. it was going to do like a little load shedding again. I was thinking, like, oh crap, it's going to probably cut us <laughs> off there. We're going to have to do part two maybe next week or something like that I, yeah i was i was thinking maybe you know the, the the worst case scenario we could do it on our i could do it on my phone maybe and just use some mobile data but okay luckily we, we luckily we, we got the thing so no, absolutely no, I, re- I really appreciate that Brian. thank you uh i guess before we close out and i don't hit my mic uh before we close out is there any shout outs or anything you want to give to anyone out there especially in the community there are a lot of guys that's been supporting me, uh, you included, and uh, guys like Drumman190, Charles by Ash Williams, Mike Conway, Brian Drums, uh, Virtual Drummer, so many Bob 70s drum. I love that guy. I really love the way I said it to him on his one of his videos tonight, actually. Uh, I love the way he grooves. He has such a he has such a fluid way of playing. Hmm. There's so many drum. There's so many guys that I admire. Uh, Joey Clark, Carl uh, Castro. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of guys, man. The there's, list goes on and on. The list goes on and on. No, check out every single drummer that you see on YouTube. Give them some love and subscribe because everybody is doing the same thing. Uh, we were talking about Rush earlier. Um, I think the biggest Rush fan I know is Bruce Baxter. Uh, he he absolutely loves Neil Peart. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can see it in his playing. You can see the way that he, uh, he, he his kid is set up and everything. So yeah, so many drummers. Uh, my one of my my very good friend friends, Joaquim uh, El Baterista Rupestre. He's a such a such a great drummer. He, uh, he he nailed his blindfold cover. I'm very proud of what he did. Because um, the song he played was completely out of left field. It's something I wouldn't think he would play. But, yeah, I guess you guys have to wait for the compilation that comes out in May. So, you All can right. see what everybody does. I would, I would have loved to feature everybody's full song then. But, I mean, then the video is going to be like two hours long. So, I can't. I, unfortunately, I can't do that. So, I'm just making a little mashup and compilation of every drummer but yeah if support all the drummers every one of them they need it we need it we need it and thank you (laughs) and thank you too all right and in closing too i was gonna mention during our interview that i had also spoken a couple times with mike conroy conway as well and uh because he was doing some of the van halen covers too i know i commented on his I think he's actually one of the best Van Halen drummers, apart from Alex Van Halen. Obviously. I mean, he, he would be the first guy to tell you, nah, no, nah, no, nah. he, he makes a lot of mistakes. There's one thing that I really appreciate about guys like Mike and like Joaquin and a lot of the guys on the community, humbleness. If you stay humble, that's that's the best part of it. 
Mike is a great drummer. He's an amazing Van Halen uh, drummer. Uh, if you stay humble, that makes you a rich man. I, I think that's that's. Yeah, money doesn't come close to humbleness. Yeah, it makes you a better human being. I guess we should say that. That's how it should be. That's yeah, how, that's, I mean, why I is really it so hard? That's how, why is it so hard? Why do some people have to be so? Oh, look at me! Look at me! Look at me! I mean, no, no. That's be why be humble. Be humble, and you know, in, inspire in, instead of making people angry. I always say to people, there's a very fine line between confidence and arrogance. Yeah. <laughs> the, those two can come so close together. You can think you're maybe very confident, but you're actually coming off as very arrogant. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, but I mean, Mike and Joaquin, those are my bookies. I, 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 I don't know if you've noticed, I always use the word boot yeah. in my, is my comments. Is like slang or something? Or? Yeah, boot is a, is a slang Afrikaans word, my native language. Uh, that means brother. Brother, okay. Brother. That's what I thought. So I, I thought you were actually saying like boy or something at first. I thought maybe you were just like... No, 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 no. Okay. No, it's good. Yeah. I mean, my, my native language is, is Afrikaans. Afrikaans. It's, uh, the, one, the one language that... Yeah, that comes basically from German and Dutch. Mm. Uh, and I think if I, if I read this correctly, I think only 12 or 10% of the world population speaks Afrikaans. Mm. But yeah, it sounds very, it's a very, uh, it's a funny language. I mean, I speak it, it's my native language, but we have some very weird words. I, I told this to Mike the other day. I said to him the, the Afrikaans word for uh, for April Fool's Day. I mean, you know what April Fool's Day is. In Afrikaans, it's Gekkedag. 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 Okay. Hopefully I'm saying it right. <laughs> Don't feel bad because oh, in my neck of the woods too. It starts with a G or it ends with a G, so it sounds very. <laughs> yeah, almost like sounding like you want to hawk or some, do something out or have to. I mean, I mean, you guys have the the very classic word potato. I mean, the, potato in Afrikaans doesn't sound the same. It's artapel. 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 So next time you go to your corner shop, just ask for a kilogram of artapels, and you see what the lady says. <laughs> I think you're crazy. <laughs> Actually, I, want some I mean, the funny thing too, in the city I live, we kind of have like our own little dialect. It's kind of like a little epicenter. I live in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. We sometimes throw like, when it's like you guys, we say yins. Yins guys or something like that. Or okay. the guys are yinzer or something like that. It's an American thing too, because in the deep south, they'll sometimes do y'all and stuff like that. Y'all, like yeah. Bit of draw, a little bit of draw. I mean, there's one, there's another drummer that I really admire, uh, Preach Rocks, Tom, uh, Tom from Preach Rocks. Uh, he's, I, I see, he, uh, he recently bought himself a very nice retirement gift. He's bought himself some uh, acoustic kits, some PDPs. And uh, <laughs> when I spoke to him, I said to him, listen, that's probably going to be louder than your electric kit. You, know, you must be, what's your wife going to say? Uh, I'm still waiting for that reply. <laughs> Yeah, he's loving what, it. He's loving it. But yeah, it looks good. You, Pittsburgh. So you're actually in the place where, like, Night of the Living Dead was shot, the very first one. I honestly wasn't know because I don't think I was born yet when they started doing it. Yeah, no, parents... but I mean, you're. I mean, George A. Romero used to shoot most of his videos in uh, most of his movies in Pittsburgh. Hmm. So that's very cool. Very, very cool. Well, I know they did the Dark Knight Returns with uh, Christian Bale. I know they did some of the stuff in Pittsburgh, yeah. I think, uh, I think, with the football I think what you should do is you should go look up where that cemetery is, where they shot the original Night of the Living Dead. Hmm. And you should maybe do a podcast from there. You know, just <laughs> walk around. I'm in the cemetery. I'm, I'm, that's what I would have done. Yes, but hey, I mean, the closest we have gotten to Hollywood movies... Uh, that Mac, Mad Max Fury Road, I yeah. mean, that was shot in, in, in Namibia. I mean, Namibia is about 1,200 kilometers from where I live. So that's the closest we have had a movie, a big movie. Mm. You're in Pittsburgh. I mean, the cemetery is probably right next to your house. Mm. <laughs> nah, not that close. It's somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look it up and see where it's at. Uh, uh, no, you should go do that, man. I'll have to see. I don't know if they'll let me in after dusk, though. So that might be interesting. 
Uh, okay, I guess before we wrap up, Nathan, any last words you want to give before we officially wrap this up? Because we've talked for probably a good no, hour just and a half, wanna, Yeah, no, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity, Brian. It's really cool. It's really nice talking to you. And uh, I really appreciate you reaching out to me. And uh, can't thank you enough, my man. Thanks. Thanks, Boot. No worries, Boot. <laughs> uh, maybe some. Maybe at some point, maybe we could do a uh, video game collaboration together since you and me both like the Bloodborne and Dark Souls and those kind of fancy games at some point. Any, any I, time, I, man. I did any want to start time. another channel, and I guess I wanted to get a little philosophical maybe. I'm not sure because it, it's not my strong suit, but I thought I'd give it a try to at least give my two cents to the people out there and stuff like that. Man, I mean, if, like I said, if you if you look for me on the on the PlayStation on the Mic View 80, send me a friend request, and uh, if you ever need some help, send me a message, and I'll try and do what I can to help you. All right, sounds very good. We'll work we'll work on that. We'll work on that, and I guess I'll have to get you my blindfold challenge at some point. I hope I can do it soon. A little hectic right but now. if you if you can do it it will be an honor to feature you if you i mean i understand that everybody is busy and everybody has these schedules and stuff i'm probably one of the the, the guys that doesn't have a schedule the way i record a cover sometimes i'll come into the studio i'll turn on my drum kit and i'll just start playing and i think oh well let's do this song i know some people put out one video a month maybe two videos in a week I have this tendency to release a video every single day, mm. uh, but it's just because just get it out there. I mean, currently I think I have about 17 or f sorry, I have about 15 videos that's unlisted on my channel and I have about 20 more that's on my PC that's been edited already. So do I have a backlog of stuff? There's, the start, lot of, there's some more Bloodborne videos there. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm working on another video for the Nightmare Cinema Club. I haven't uploaded a video there in about a month. So I actually have to do something for that channel as well. But yeah, no, I don't have a schedule as such. You know, if I, if I want to do something, then I just do it. Just do it and improvise. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. All right. All right. In closing, my guest today was Mike Few. And boy, we talked a good bit there. In fact, I was pretty amazed how much we actually talked. I think we talked more than my last interview I did with uh, Eric Hedinger. He was a dramatic. He was a... Those were my bigger interviews and I was actually... Very nice. Yeah, very nice guy. Very, very, very nice guy. Absolutely. Very yeah. nice guy too. Very, very cool. Very down to earth and loving guy too. So, shout out to Eric there, buddy. And I actually got... I actually did an interview with him. So, he's going to release that episode this week. So, I'm actually going to be pretty pretty excited to see what, how that turned out or how much he edited really because I know we were doing that through zoom so actually kind of excited to see because that was the first time because he was interviewing me so i'm curious to see how that turns out oh okay okay cool yeah that's uh, that's what i love about this whole community thing is how people reach out i mean we said it uh, earlier before we started this thing is uh you know how nice technology works now and you can basically do collabs with anybody from around the world and there's no lags and there's no this and it's Th that's very cool. I mean, when I grew up, there wasn't a thing like internet. Uh, <laughs> there yeah, wasn't. A, if, you, if you wanted to speak to a, if you wanted to speak to a, a relative on the other side of the planet, there was like a, a ten second delay using a lamp, and it would cost you a fortune. Uh, so yeah, no, this is this is cool. This is really cool. All right. Thank you so much, Mike, and thank you so much for coming on again. Was you safe? Stay safe. Stay tuned, both. Same to you, but cheers, man. Take care.